Hello, my friends. Long story short, Russia lost one more big landing ship. Let's watch how it happened. The video from the Ukrainian drone boats was shared today in internet. So here we see the big Russian landing ship. It is indeed very big. We're gonna speak about the capabilities of the ship and the size a little later. Now let's watch this video. Ukraine again used the drone boats to target the ship as usual. And this is the video of the first strike. The Russian crew seems to be not really aware of what is happening. However, we may see at least two of the persons, maybe three, who are looking for the drones in the sector and probably two at the nose of the ship. Here we see how the drone approaches the ship and yeah, for sure there were some of the people on board. We do not see the images of the exact impact, probably they were cut from the video, but later on I know that the big version of the video will be presented. And here we have one more video of the ship. We may see the splashes all around the drone boat. It means that crew fires towards the boat but unable to hit it. And this is probably the last image of the ship. It was banking or rolling on the side just before going to the bottom. One more Russian ship was converted to submarine. And here the roll, the bank is very high and the out part of the ship is already underwater partially. I found the news about the Russian ship being destroyed on the ground news platform. As you can see, it's the top Ukrainian war news and they have dedicated chapter for the war in Ukraine. So it's very convenient for me to find all the information around Ukraine and what is happening around the world. So let's check out this article. Ukrainian military says it sank a Russian landing ship in the Black Sea. But now we have already confirmation. I showed you the video before from the drone boats. The Russian ship destruction was covered all around the media sources, including the ground news. You may see more than 150 articles dedicated to this topic. You may check out my personal link for this website. It's ground.news slash Dennis, where you may unlock all of the features of this platform. What I like that you have the bias distribution depends on the article source, plus a factuality report so in this particular news we have very high factuality and you may check out every article finding what you want to read i usually choose high factuality as always i check the ukrainian media because the origin of the news is ukraine so here we have the information about this particular ship that it was targeted with the help of the drone boats magura v5 or v5 if you want to check the origin of the sources you may click on this map and find out how many articles are there in the world so the most news about the case are originated from the united states of america sometimes i also check the russian side i need to understand their bias so if you want to get all of the news from all around the world in one place and also use a unique feature which this platform may provide I highly recommend you to subscribe for the ground news using my unique link. It's ground.news slash Dennis, where you may get 30% of discount specially made for my followers. By using my link, you also support my job on YouTube and also you support the team of the ground news, which are totally independent from the big media corporations. They rely just on us, on our subscriptions. Ground news, thank you for being partner of my channel and my constant sponsor. Let's go back to the main topic of today's video. The Russian big landing ship was targeted near to Yalta. The Yalta city is somewhere over here. So here's Alushta, Lupka. I believe that the distance to the shore was not more than 25 miles. So it was within the territorial waters of Crimea. Russia thinks that it's their territorial waters, but Magura boats Thing differently. According to the screenshot taken from the Flight Radar 24, by the time Russia lost their ship in the Black Sea, the MQ Reaper was performing the surveillance mission not far away from Crimea. Probably it pointed out the exact location of the Russian ship to Ukrainian side. At first we received this kind of the image from the place, there is some sort of the boat on fire. The local Crimean sources start to say that the Russian ship was targeted over there and later on they say that it sank down to the bottom. Later we saw this video and probably this is the rescue boat that went to the place around one hour later because even from this distance it doesn't look like a big Russian landing ship. After a while the helicopter was flying around trying to search for the ship but there were no any signs of it. Maybe some of the 
oil plumps on a where that's it. The helicopter type is CAMOV 27, so K27. It is used for search and rescue operations to deliver some of the cargo, some of the infantry, and also to identify the enemy submarines because it has the powerful radar on the front and probably it found the submarine. A friendly one. New submarine. The ship that Russia lost was named after Cesar Kunikov. He was the warrior of the Soviet Union. And here you may see the Vapory, so it had the gun, which is capable to fight against low-flying objects, or in this case those could be Magura boats, but it didn't work. Here is one of the Russian sailors saying how good the ship is capable ship and indeed Russia sometimes even send them abroad to other seas across the ocean so those are very big capable ships and it is really strange as for me that this cannon wasn't really oh it is the air defense cannon and for sure it should be used against the air targets not the sea targets it even cannot go down you saw this on this part of the video let me show you so it cannot go down to the sea level i think yeah it's very very restrictive weaponry made just for the aerial defense that's it they also have the rocket artillery systems over there probably to target what i'm not sure what they might target with that because for sure the rockets are over there are used as in the grad rocket artillery system so you are unable to control every missile and it's no directional weaponry but this is the major weaponry of this ship. Basically, it's the carrier of the Russian units. It may accommodate 10 of the tanks inside, plus lots of the infantry, or 12 of the BMP. It is crazy how big this thing inside really is. This is the main door. It opens and all the forces go right away to the beach or to the shore attacking the enemy units. Oh my god, just look at those terrible conditions for the Russian sailors. It's uh, crazy. I think in prison you have better beds than in this ship. The chief is cooking something. Probably now he should cook some of the seafood this time. Or he became seafood himself. Probably. This is Stolova, so the local cafe. And here you can see the icon of some sort of the saint guy in the russian orthodox church the ship was able to accommodate 87 of the sailors so 87 crew members and i think that most of them went also to the bottom together with the ship there they have some of the tv and obviously putin 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 was unable to save his sailors on this ship Proper security wasn't granted for the crew to fight against the drone boats. I believe that most of the drone boats made it to the target. I think at least four of them were used for this attack. And here's the old video of how this ship was used. So it lands just on the shore, on the beach. It opens the front door and later on Russian forces start to come out. Lots of the infantry vehicles, as you may see. There could be some of the tracks and, as I say to you, 10 of the tanks. So Russia was intended to use those ships to put their soldiers somewhere near to Odessa. And they already landed their forces not far away from Berdansk. Then they were attacked by Ukrainian Tochka U ballistic missiles. By the way, this ship was also damaged. It happened in 2022. Then Russia tried to land their forces near to Berdansk and also they supplied some of the equipment using those ships and the Ukrainian side used the ballistic missiles to get rid of those ships totally destroying one of those but the rest of the ships were able to make it off the shore and one of those ships was Cesar Kunin. It was damaged and also lost some of the crew members including captain. You may see it behind on fire. Nevertheless Russia was able to restore the ship and continue to use it until today. By the way the Russian hero soldier in honor of whom the ship was named also lost his life on February 14th exactly 81 years ago. Coincidence?
could be. The main question remains, what this ship was carrying at the moment of attack? Some sources say that it was transported some of the artillery shells from Novorossiysk to Sevastopol to reinforce the Russian group on the south. Well, it could be. The information about it was leaked from the Tambov factory in Russia, which produces the artillery shells and delivers them to the Russian army. The kaboom of the ship was really big, so indeed there was something inside it. So with today's loss, Russia has two of the big landing ships remaining in their Black Sea Marine fleet, which reduces the capability of the Russian army to move their forces through the water, I mean tanks, BMPs and infantry. For that they require lots of the ships, but now they have two in the Black Sea. It's nothing really for conducting big and difficult operations. So still Ukraine has two big landing ships to go and in general there are many targets for Ukrainian army left in the Black Sea, including the biggest Russian ship there, Kerch. By the way, it was already damaged once last year, but Russia repaired it and now it is working fine for them. The ship that Russia lost today was built in 1986 in Soviet Union and Russia used it many times for their conflicts, including the war in Georgia, which happened in 2008. Also, it was used in Syria and, as you saw already, in Ukraine. But Ukraine decided to stop the adventure of this ship. Just for you to understand the dimension data, the length of the ship is 112 and half meters, so 369 feet, quite a big one. Some Russian or pro-Russian bloggers continue to say that this loss is not important, but no, this loss is very huge for the Russian army because they are unable to move their army using those ships any longer. Because they are unable to move their army any longer using this ship. We have the first confirmed operation of JLSDB missiles that were supplied to Ukrainian army. The range of the missile is 150 kilometers and Ukraine targeted the ammunition depot near to Krimina, Luhansk Oblast. How do we know that it was JLSDB missile or it's better to say gliding bomb because at first it starts from the Hymers or M270 rocket artillery system and flies very very far away. Well, Russia was able to recover some of the debris showing us that definitely with the marking and with all of those parts it is JLSDB. Just look at this part over here it is the out part which you may find on this picture and also Russia recovered the part of the wing of this gliding bomb. So the first stage is the accelerator of the Hymer shell and then it flies, expands the wing and glides towards the Russian positions. As you can see it is very precise and the kaboom was really big out there mostly because of the ammunition itself. The missile is not that huge I would say. Alright, now let's briefly check the front lines update. Let's move to our hotspot of Divka, where unfortunately Russian army moves forward every day. I'm very concerned about this area because probably there are some of the Ukrainian forces, at least according to this military map, they are over there and Russia is up to close this side. It means that Ukrainian forces could be encircled in that area. I already said around three days ago that it's time to withdraw the forces from this area because it's getting very tough. Hopefully they were moved out already because we don't have the latest latest update of what is happening on the front lines just from the deep state military map. There could be some of the delay no one is able to obtain the clarified, detailed information from the particular spot of the front lines. So all of that stuff is not exactly precise. But on the other hand, we don't have the reliable information stating that the Ukrainian forces left their positions in this place. So it could be the possible Russian encirclement. And in that case, it is crazy. It's not about the lack of artillery shells or lack of the ammunition. It is about the Ukrainian military command. They should think about Ukrainian soldiers in this case and to withdraw them from this particular area on the south. Also, Russia propelled a little on the north. Let's go to the timeline. So it was yesterday 
and it is today they moved behind the road and their goal is to cut the next one so they are very aggressive however from what i know i'm sure about it ukraine sent the reinforcements to the place and now the heavy fight is ongoing even heavier as many say than in bahmut city Let's check the timeline on the south, so it was yesterday and it is today. Russia propels forward and here is very, very narrow neck for Ukrainian army to move out. This is the latest map from the Maiko 73. He is very precise with the data and here this area is a little bigger, but still it's very hard. And he confirms that Russia took some of the ground in this place. Russia is using artillery, aviation bombs all around and they also move forward in this place. The critical road for Ukraine is now over here, which connects Siverne and Avdivka town. The only good news from Avdivka is that our soldiers were able to ambush the Russian convoy on the northern part far behind Vesele. So Russia was up to send some of the reinforcements to the place and those were targeted by the FPV drones plus artillery. Russia lost at least 10 of the vehicles out there. For now we have just photos, hopefully the video will be released too. The Russian army usually supplies their forces during the night time but here we have FPV drones equipped with a night vision camera or with the thermal cameras. It's awesome. Russia continued to lose their officers. The colonel, his name was Magomedjanov Magomedali Kamilievich, who was a commander of the Russian Marines, lost his life in Sevastopol's hospital, where he was delivered a day before with heavy wound. Probably he was wounded in Kherson Oblast, the southern part of Ukraine, because Sevastopol is located also on the southern part of Ukraine, not really that far away from Krynki, around 300 kilometers, but still it's the nearest point for the Russian military, nice military hospital. There was a new Ramstein meeting today about the military support of Ukraine. Sides involved discuss the supplement of the F-16s to Ukrainian army. We have some of the positive signals that Ukraine will obtain them very, very soon. Canada will also join the deal with $44 million to support the program and the spare parts for Ukrainian F-16s. Meanwhile, Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania are getting ready for the possible Russian intervention. They are building the defense lines and I would say it's a very proper thing to do. It could be the only way to stop the Russian possible offensive to their countries. At the same time, NATO allies are worried about the support from the United States of America and about the speech of Donald Trump that he said recently that he might encourage Russia to attack NATO allies, so it's complete nonsense, I would say, to promote this stuff and the Russian aggression. Especially in those exact countries invest more than 2% of the GDP into their military. So for sure they require the support from the allies. Whether they will have it or not in this worst case scenario, I think it's better for them to be prepared for any kind of the case. The White House declassified some of the information from intelligence services about the Russian military programs. Russians want to send nukes into the space for the capability to attack every country on our globe, plus some of the satellites, so they want to create the space-based nuclear weaponry. With that capability, they do not require any traditional ways of transportation of their nuclear bombs or warheads. No tactical missiles, no ballistic missiles, nothing. They will be capable to target everything on our globe with a space nuclear weaponry. Moreover, they will do it very, very fast, because there is basically no time for the missile to travel from Russia to the United States. The nuclear satellite would be located over the territory, for example, of the United States of America. So it's the greatest threat for a very long time. It even covers the threat from the China right now. It's complete nonsense what Russia is doing, but they are very goal-oriented to threaten the world with their nukes. It is the standard Putin's blackmail tactics. Give me Ukrainian territories, 
otherwise I'll launch nukes into the space. And really there were some of the messages from him towards the United States officials that Russia is ready to freeze the war on the current positions. But my friends, it's just a temporary solution. Russia will modernize their army, they'll produce more tanks, more everything, and will continue to attack Ukraine one more time. They'll say that Ukraine started the fire first. We have already seen it in 2022 and in 2014. That's why President Biden calls for immediate military support of Ukraine and other allies. We need to cope with the Russian aggression on the ground. If there is a peace talk, it only should be then Ukraine will get its territories back. That is what Ukrainian side at least says. And our Western lies probably say that Ukraine should be strong to start the negotiations with Russia. If we start negotiations right now, Russia would say give us all of the Zaporizhia Oblast, Donetsk, Luhansk, and it will never happen. So for now, from what I can see, the war will go for many years. And even if Ukraine loses all of the support from allies, it will continue to fight using its own resources, but in that case, will have more losses compared to what we have right now. So the support is important, first of all, to minimize losses in Ukrainian army and for our civilians who stayed in Ukraine. The White House trolls the speaker Mike Johnson, greeting him with Valentine's Day. Roses are red, violets are blue, the border deal was crushed, because of you. He also has the potential to crush the military support for Ukraine, Israel and Taiwan. Hopefully it will not happen like that. And here we go with the Starlings that were delivered to the Russian army. Those guys are very happy about this new delivery. Those are not being used, very good condition. I'm sure that Russians were not able to trophy our Starlings showing them to this photo because definitely those look very very new yes there is the small percentage that it could have happened but something tells me our previous investigation about the starling also told that russia constantly have the supplies from the starling maybe why the third countries who knows and you know who supports canceling the weapon supplies to ukraine obviously china so mega part of republican party now plays in favor of China and also in favor of Russia. They all are interested to stop the military support of Ukraine. It's obvious. But you know what? Something tells me that finally United States will continue to support Ukraine in any case. Chinese CCP get lost. My friends, don't forget to press your huge like to this video. By doing so, you help me a lot. And also don't forget to check the link for the ground news, the awesome source where you may find all of the news around the world. As usual, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.